Hey, what's up, y'all? Today we're going to be taking a look at Battlefield 2042. Now, I want to be as transparent as possible, so I'm going to be showing you everything that's wrong with this game right at the start. Later on in the video, we'll segue into what I actually enjoyed and some of the things I found positive about this game. But first, I wanted to show you guys its many, many flaws and faults. Okay, I want to start this off with the glitches and bugs. Now, I'm going to be honest, I did not experience this every single time I played. Truth be told, out of the entire week I was capturing footage, I think I really experienced maybe like three days of uh, bugs and glitches. But for the most part, the rest of the week, the well, rest of the week and a half, I didn't really run into these problems. But the fact they're here at all kind of does speak to the quality that's presented here. Now there actually was a few more glitches, but they were minor animation glitches that I didn't really feel like I should add. But I will let you guys know there's a level of jankiness to this game that you should definitely expect upon purchasing it. Aside from the bugs, I really did not like the menu systems present in this game. They felt very clunky and disorganized, and uh, I also hated the plus menu for switching to gun attachments on the fly. You cannot make these uh, changes out of combat. You basically have to be in combat and you have to use this menu system. Now the only way I could see this actually being a good thing is if they actually let you select the gun attachments that you unlocked on the fly, but that's not the case. You have to wait till the end of the round. So the whole entire plus menu is just really stupid. Next I want to talk about classes. I've heard a lot of misinformation floating around about this game as far as classes and destructibility goes. So I'm just going to give you guys a clear representation of what's in this game. Now there are classes in this game. They are the worst versions I've seen out of you know all the, the previous battlefields. All the previous modern battlefields. Like this is a step back from Battlefield 4 and Bad Company in my opinion. But there are still classes in this game. Now you're able to make your own class but you're not able to mix and match essentially. You can't make a medic engineer. You can't make a support engineer etc. It's basically just, you know, being able to choose a loadout as far as weapons and, you know, one thing, like one specialty. That's it. It's not really as free-formed as I thought. With that being said, though, that's actually a good thing. The negative here is the fact that they've kind of just misplaced certain abilities. Perfect example, anybody can revive. Everybody has the defibrillators now. Your class, it doesn't matter what class you are, everybody can revive. Now, this would be a good thing if more people used it, but it, it's, that's not the case. I actually get revived less when I play this than I do when I play Battlefield 4 or Bad Company, and which is absolutely sad. But aside from that, the classes are basically the same. They're just, they seem to be like a watered-down, dumbed-down version of the other games. Perfect example is, like, as far as I am now, I have not been able to unlock a better ammo crate or a better health crate. It's just like what you get in the start is basically that's it. That's what you get for the entire game. And that's that leads me into another problem I have with this game. The progression is probably some of the worst I've ever seen in a Battlefield title. There's not that many weapons. The progression system doesn't seem very deep. Now there's also no progression system in place for the specialist. And I have mixed feelings about this. On one hand, I'm glad because the specialists are actually pretty broken and unbalanced. On the other hand, it just raises the question, why are they even in the game? I don't think I've seen a game with a bigger identity crisis in a long time. This game desperately does not know what it wants to be. And what's sad is it's actually really fun when it tries to just do what Battlefield has always done. When it tries to emulate these other games, that's where it falls flat and the systems just kind of collide. And you have these really bad design choices. Lastly, I want to talk about the maps. Then I'm going to give my final opinion and pretty much wrap this up. The maps in this game are a mixed bag. Now, because of Portal, you have maps from Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, and Bad Company 2. And I have to say, all these maps are absolutely wonderful. I've had the most fun on this game on those maps. They're remastered. They have the same level of destructibility. 
that they had in their respective games is a, definitely a massive plus and a, a big feather in this game's cap. I think this is the reason to buy the game, honestly, is these maps. Now, the problem is, you know, you still have to deal with the rest of the game. You still have to deal with these specialists that are baked into the core gameplay, sadly. And you also have to deal with, you know, a lot of these other bad design choices. On top of that, the maps made specifically for this game are just not good. They're either too big or just altogether poorly constructed. There's a couple of them that I actually did enjoy, but for the most part, they were all pretty bad and felt out of place and underbaked. Now, this is the thing for me. I feel like I can recommend this game. If you are a diehard Battlefield fan, I could de definitely recommend you to get this game. But the question is, how much are you paying for it? Now, I got this during Black Friday for $10, and I feel like for $10, I've got my money's worth. I'm really enjoying it, and despite all these flaws that I've listed, I'm having a hard time putting it down. As a hardcore Battlefield fan, I can easily say that this game is worth it at the right price. There's a lot of fun to still be had here, even with, you know, the specialist, even with the small amount of weapons, even with the limited progression. As long as you're not spending full price, it's okay and it's acceptable. For $10, this is about right. You know, this is okay for $10. For $20, you're pushing it a little bit, but yeah, it's still okay. Full price is where this becomes egregious and it's like, you know, a steaming pile of shit. But at $10 to $20, absolutely. This is, you know, this is doable. So if you're a diehard Battlefield fan, I say go for it. You know, a lot of people have kind of tried to substitute Call of Duty for Battlefield, that's not really possible for me. You know, the level of destructibility is it's not even worth, you know, comparing. There's smaller maps. The level of vehicle combat is not worth comparing. There's certain things that Battlefield does that you're only going to see and experience in Battlefield. And that's why I would recommend this game to a diehard Battlefield fan. If you're just a casual and you're looking for a first-person shooter, you're most likely going to enjoy Call of Duty more. And honestly, you're probably going to get more bang for your buck if we're talking about both games at full price. Now, if you can find this for a deep sale, a deep discount, go for it. But I want to tell you guys something too. Now, they're actually planning to have a free weekend for this game. So you can actually try this game out and not spend any money, which I suggest everyone to do. Because a lot of the things that I listed early on could easily be deal breakers for other people. I know everybody has varying opinions and they have varying degrees of what they're willing to accept when playing a game. Well, anyway, y'all, I hope this was helpful. Uh, see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Peace.